So can you introduce yourself and tell us the kind of research you do? Uh, is it academic or non-academic or both? So my name is Michael Wigginton. I am a PhD student at the University of Ottawa. I'm in my fifth year. And my research is academic. It's all related to my, my PhD work. And it's mostly focused around representation. My, my thesis focuses on uh, political, the recruitment of political candidates and how it affects women's representation in Canada. And my other research is broadly focused on political participation. So I, I've done a lot of research on what affects voter turnout, like what makes people vote, what makes people not vote, and also work on uh, why people vote the way they do. And it's all, it's all been quantit, with one exception, it's all been quantitative in nature. So I work mostly with survey data, mostly other surveys, very little of them myself, as well as data from Elections Canada and agencies like that. So when you're conducting different research or working on these different projects, do you always do so in the same way? No, uh, I definitely don't always do so in the same way. It, it really depends on a lot of factors. There have been times where, like with my thesis, for example, actually, where I found some data and I started looking around and then I had a research question afterwards. So there have been other times where, uh, for example, I, I did a, a paper, like I published in electoral studies last year with my supervisor on the role of candidate attractiveness in Quebec elections and how it influences how people vote. And that came because uh, I went and voted for the first time living in Quebec. I noticed there are candidate photos on the ballot and uh, that kind of sparked my imagination and I went running with it. But so I, particularly for me, the biggest difference is always like where the ideas come from and what, what point in the whole research cycle it actually starts at. Uh, that has varied wildly for me. Um, okay, so you said that you don't have a typical process, but can you, is there anything about your process that like as you've been doing research over the years, you sort of like honed or, or like figured out methods that work for you or that don't work for you in terms of the way that you work? I guess the one thing that I've really, well, I wouldn't say honed in the past tense, but that I am actively honing is uh, really about the writing process, knowing when to stop looking at data and to stop thinking of alternative ideas and when to start writing. And I've also gotten a lot better, mostly at my supervisors, uh, incessant uh, nagging me about it, uh, of actually outlining papers. I, I used to, particularly as an undergrad and going through grad school, uh, I would write in a very chaotic fashion where I would just kind of start writing and fill in the pieces that here and there, but I've gotten much better about at the very outset knowing how I'm going to structure a, an article or a paper or my thesis. Uh, that I have found has become much more uniform that I, I do that. I do it on paper uh, because I find that's the only way I can get myself to really commit to it and to not get distracted. Uh, that, that is probably the one uniform piece. And do you do that before you like get into the research or do you do that or do you have you like gathered a whole bunch of research uh, or like data or sorted through a whole bunch of stuff and then write that line that is varied but where I, i'm kind of landing is that it, it happens twice essentially that there is a very rough outline uh like for example for the the one about uh, candidate attractiveness like because we actually had to go out and collect data for that ourselves so that needed some more thought than other things i've done we ha I had an idea at the beginning of what it was all going to look like, but then once I had actually done the analysis and I knew what the results were, then once again, I, I wrote like a final structure, which only is going to vary slightly from what I set out to do, but it's still something I do before I start writing up the results. And that kind of connects to a question that I was going to ask later, which is about anytime your research doesn't go according to plan or like, cause I was going to say, if you create an outline at the, at the outset and then collect data or sift through data and then are like redoing that outline? Has it ever shifted dramatically? Oh yeah, uh, there's, um, we actually just resubmitted it for a peer review, a uh, paper on internet voting and how it affects turnout. I mean, that we started in 2019, we're still not done. Uh, and it's, it's changed form several times because we didn't find what we were expecting. Uh, we'll see if peer reviewers disagree with us, but we, found that actually, despite what we had hypothesized and what other research found, uh, allowing people to vote online doesn't increase turnout at all. Uh, and so that paper is actually, it was both, it's now actually split into two entirely separate articles. It happened in one from the beginning and it has changed form, I think at least three times. We have pretty much 
deleted the entire thing and rewritten it and redone analyses. It, that 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 actually has been taking up an inordinate amount of my life for the past. Right, two years. And probably unexpectedly so. Very much so. We thought it was very straightforward. We didn't think it was going to take us very long. I didn't think I'd still be working on it two years later. Mm. But here I am. Does that kind of thing happen often in terms of like length of projects? I would say so. Um, in particular, just that I, this is also maybe just personal failing. I've, I've never been good at predicting how long things will take me and knowing, uh, knowing what is a simple project and what is not uh, is something you can only really do in hindsight. A lot of things that you think are going to be simple and quick to do end up taking you a lot of time. A lot of things that you think are going to take you a lot of time actually end up being much simpler than you expected. And some ideas you think are absolute genius just don't pan out. And some ideas you didn't think were that great are the ones that actually work. Right. And so, okay. So in terms of that question around like research, not going according to plan and, and having to adapt or troubleshoot, is that the example that, that do you have any other examples of that or? Well, the only other example, which is uh, much less informative for anyone is I uh, accidentally deleted uh, most of my PhD thesis at the beginning of this year. Uh, that wasn't fun. Um, but all I really learned from that is you should back up your data. You should back it up in at least two places, not one. Cause the real problem I had is that I, uh, I use Microsoft OneDrive. It's like Dropbox, same sort of ideal. It's great. It auto backs up. But the problem is if you overwrite your data with garbage, like I did, uh, the backup updates through your, for your new garbage data that doesn't work and it's all gone and you have to do several months of work over again. That's insane. Yeah, what, it wasn't a good time. Um, what does it mean to you to be a researcher? Or like, how do you, how does that, like, do, do you feel like there's an identity with that? It's funny. I, I haven't ever really thought of myself as a researcher, but obviously I guess I am one. It's how I spend most of my day. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never actually, I've never, I've never identified that way. And I guess I mean, obviously, to me, being a researcher simply means to do research. Now, I don't actually, now that I think about it, I think there's anything more to it than that. Anybody who does research in some capacity is a researcher. If you work for the government as a policy analyst and you're doing your own research, if you're working independently, if you work at a university, if you're a student, if you're a professor, it's, it's all research. You're all researchers. And do you bring any kind of, like, specific, I don't know, perspectives or values to the work that you're doing? Is that important to, to how you're thinking about the like topics you're interested in and how you're approaching them? Uh, I'm not like some people who can really identify particular problems they're trying to solve or that have a really particular mission. I, I research things that I'm interested in and that's really the extent of it. And I don't know if that is a good or a bad thing, but it's, it's what I do. I would say that I'm always, however, conscious of, not conscious, con conscious, there we go, conscious of that. Because obviously, even if, you know, neutrality is an ideal, it's not a reality. There, there, there's no entirely neutral observer. I'm always, I always have to be, try to be aware of what underlying assumptions I'm making, what biases I have, what I'm not thinking about. Particularly because I, you know, I do, I do, do a fair bit of work on, uh, on race and gender. And I acknowledge, you know, I am I'm male and I'm white and I'm not researching people that are like me in that regard. And I'm always trying to be mindful of what it is that I'm missing. So I guess that is the perspective I bring. Uh, and for me, it's really more about what I, what I, what I don't know than what I actually know. That is a value. I mean, being, even just being aware of that is a value that you're bringing to the work you're doing versus not thinking about it. And then, I don't know, kind of approaching it without that. Yes, and I guess also from like a very positivist, post-positive perspective, I'm always, my approach is to try to steer out of it as much as possible. I try, I know some people go the other way on this. They uh, sort of embrace the biases that they have. And I, I think that's also entirely valid, but that is the approach I'm taking is to attempt to be as neutral an observer as possible while knowing that that's not possible. Right, yeah. Um, is there anything else that you can think of about the work that you do or like, I mean, did you expect to be doing this kind of work when you were a <clears> student? Did, was this like an aspiration? Or I guess you, you even just said you didn't think of yourself as a researcher in terms of like an identity. So maybe not. Say, absolutely not. Uh, in no way, shape or form. I, uh, I was going to go to law school. 
uh, when I finished undergrad, but then U Ottawa offered me money to do a master's and I was scared of law school debt, so I did a master's degree. I also never thought I'd like quantitative work. I didn't really take many of those classes in undergrad. Uh, I was always okay at math, but I never really saw it as what I did, but uh, I had a master's thesis idea about um, voting behavior and I kind of just stumbled backwards into finding a supervisor who did quantitative work and realizing that, oh, a quantitative approach would actually answer this question best. And I, I am here now. I, 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 I've taught quantitative methods at U Ottawa before. This is not who I thought I was going to be. This is not the path I thought I would take in life. But I ended up here and I'm quite happy with it. So I guess as far as for students listening to this, I guess one message would be just not counting off any options. And I, I've had friends that have done this as well, but I've ended up as I have a friend who ended up becoming a technical fingers job title was data scientist with um, Indigenous Affairs. He did not think that he was going to do anything like this, but he also kind of stumbled his way and became a data analyst. And he's also quite happy. I kind of love that. Just that like, you never know, you truly never know where you're going to go. I, I'm doing my master's in public administration, but I come from the arts world and I've had a decade of work in the arts world in like completely other capacity. And now I'm here. And I think that there's something, I don't know, exciting about just like following your interests, as you said before too, like in terms of what you're researching, following your interests and then being open to you know, like whatever comes about and then just going with it. No, it's very useful. I actually often find myself thinking back to things I learned in my qualitative methods course when I was an undergrad. And I, I really thought I was only taking it to meet a requirement. I wasn't paying my close of attention. Slightly regret that now, but Can't I, go back I guess that. you shouldn't, you shouldn't discount it entirely, I guess.